name is Dr. Rick Sigill. I'm and action. Hey, uh, Jay had a... This is Kirk to them. And action. Hey, everyone, it's Dr. Rick. And Elaine had a question about medical cannabis and munchies. So is this, if this is the first time you're finding me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and practice calm. Calm. Just the word calm makes you relaxed. And that's what I wanted to talk about was we all need a practice of calm. And, and one thing that I find is that, especially with COVID and what we're seeing in the news and the protests, there's a lot of stress out there. The stress that we assume is normal in the United States, I don't see that in other countries. In Italy, I didn't see the same thing. In the Philippines, I didn't see the same thing. We view uh, American lifestyle different and uh, we accept certain things that shouldn't be accepted and shouldn't be considered normal. So American lifestyle is tough because compared to the rest of the world, I think we um, bring on inflammation and stress and poor sleepless nights. And uh, for the value of being rich, I'm not sure if that's valuable. So if we have to do a 50 hour work, we can crank out everything you can out of work. Get to be number one, put down everybody else, be the best in the business, make a million bucks. But you go home and you can't turn off that stress response. That's going to drive you to do something. And the typical answer for that is to have a drink, especially if you don't have a calming practice yeah. or some studies. Alcohol once a day, I think, in the Framingham study, it helped or is related to longevity. However, if you look at what you're drinking, unless it's hard liquor, and I've done a video on alcohol, there's a ton of sugar and a ton of carbohydrates in beer, wine, definitely, from fruit. So the, you can calm with a drink. My dad used to have scotch on the rocks when he would get home. I'm kind of a beer guy, but you know, at 57, a beer every night, sometimes because of the stressors and my clinic is ramping up. So I'm back to where I was before. That's 50, 55, 60 hours a week sometimes. And that's considered normal. In fact, if you're in America, you got to do more. You got to get patients out every 10 minutes. Got to be number one, better than everybody else. And that's a very bad idea because it leads to what I was talking about. And if you have one beer, it's easy to just have two. Why not? I need more calming tonight because I'm going to be home late. I'm supposed to stop eating at eight and I didn't have my dinner yet. So I'm thinking about not even eating dinner. And for a one meal a day kind of guy, if I only had a salad at 5 p.m. and I was supposed to have my true dinner at home at 7.30 and it's now eight. So see, I'm already stressing out. So, uh, but I can't have beer and alcohol because number one, it would screw up my sleep. Number two, that's a lot of damn calories. I'm already 10 pounds up. Then for my patients that don't have a body mass index 23 to 25, that means you're tipping the scales and you're, you've are you got a risk factor. Is when you have a waist to hip ratio, that's a certain amount, your BMI is a certain amount, triglycerides, HDL, uh, cholesterol, blood pressure, all that stuff adds up. And if you just take one hit every five years, before you know it, you've got the makings, the recipe for a medical disease. And a medical disease only blossoms unless you change it. And that medical disease usually in the United States comes out to usually heart disease, cancer, or some kind of neurodegenerative disorder. So we really have to do our part. And in a long-winded kind of way, I'll talk to you now about medical cannabis. So medical cannabis in the Illinois is uh, rumored to be much better than Colorado. And Colorado has been doing it great. California has been doing great for a while. And the quality is better because I think we have higher hurdles to jump through to get approved. So uh, I question some of the cultivators in central Illinois having product available. So the, that's always been a problem, but there's just a plethora of different uh, things. Going from the least processed to the most processed, there's the flower that you can smoke. And then there's the flower that's broken down into oil, a shatter, sometimes it's considered a wax, so you can smoke that. Uh, it doesn't have the tar that your flower will have. Then you have oil in vape form that, again, is a little easier. It's faster inhaled. Don't have to worry about melting it down. You still have the active ingredients, but less tar. Uh, then you have the edibles, which is 
you can have chocolate, you can have baked goods, you can have tincture. My favorite is always going to be tincture. You can put it under the tongue, get it absorbed into the bloodstream fast, and you can swallow it for a slower release. Mm -hmm. Flour, the waxes, the shatter, the vapes, they are unadulterated. They have everything of the plant that you can get. Um, and they work quick. And they also go away quick. The edibles... Because of the second pass, after you, if you can put it under the tongue and get the first absorption to hit and give you what you want, whether it's calming practice or inflammation control, you have a second hit from the, the liver and the digestive system, and then a third hit if it passes through again. So you can have a prolonged amount. And then there's topicals, there's patches, and there's a couple other nasal sprays and uh, the like after that. But that's really processed, really expensive. The flour is not so expensive, but it has the biggest hits. So as you, as you process it, you can filter out exactly which component and chemical you want. So with regards to Elaine and using cannabis instead of alcohol, I think it, number one, cannabis doesn't have any calories. Alcohol has got calories. Alcohol not only has calories, it also has heavy carbohydrates and sugars, which usually induce a hormone response. Now, the objective of both of these things is, is to induce a hormone response to give you relaxation. Practice calm. But you have to look at the collateral damage. You can have lasting effects into the next morning. You don't want that. And you can also be really high. You don't really want that. You want to be functioning at home for your spouse and your kids and maybe some extra work or your second job. Alcohol has the sugar and the carbohydrates, so it has a downside effect with turning on insulin. Insulin doesn't allow you to break down fat, and it makes you crave for more carbohydrates later on. And if you already have a weight issue, if your BMI is high, if you have syndrome X, metabolic syndrome, PCOS, that could be a problem. So will medical cannabis do the same? Maybe, but because of how well-defined you can have different variances in the plant, the oil, the wax, the edible, the topical, you can actually fine tune the effect you want with the plethora of what's available in Illinois. When you divide the medical cannabis into its very fine groups as you process it, if you want it just to relax, you can find your balance of CBD and THC to give you a little bit of relaxation without being just totally zonked out. Uh, you can also, if you want to get to sleep, you can just get to sleep and you can have it zonk you out and then be out of your system quick. If you need it for inflammation because you're just so painful from the work, the physical work you're doing, you can do that too. As you process it, you can take out and select out the side effects you don't want and munchies are side effects. If you have munchies, then you are taking the wrong formulation, whether it's too much sativa, too much indica, a little bit of a hybrid, too much THC, not enough CBD, CBGA. There's all these chemical breakdowns that you find in the plant that, again, if you take the plant, you have everything. You can't really fine tune it. If you go down and process it a little bit, you can fine tune exactly what you want. Stress response, and maybe if you have HIV, because one of the reasons that medical cannabis was approved before in drug form was because of the wasting of HIV. Uh, in the 90s, HIV was killing. It was almost like COVID is now. Everybody's worried about it and dying from it. But one of the problems was you would have emaciation. You'd lose appetite. You'd lose muscle and you would be nothing and your immune system would suffer. So sometimes by smoking cannabis, it would give you an appetite which is really nice when you have cancer or chemotherapy or just that uh, problem of emaciation. And that doesn't mean all cannabis will do that, but that is a, a symptom that you would want for those folks. But that's not a symptom you want if you're obese. So you can kind of fine tune which, which of the chemicals you want. That's how vast the different products are out there. I even tried a nasal spray once, supposedly for headaches. It's uses are for if you have somebody like a kid that's seizing and you can't get cannabis in any other way fast, squirt it into the nose. You immediately have a calming effect to the seizures. So again, we bring out calm. So calm has always been, it's an old school tradition to practice calm. Whether you are in an American Indian sweat lodge 
or you practice in India, in China, you have the calming practice of incense. Or in the more modern era, when you go to church and they're um, doing this in church with incense, I remember as a altar boy, whenever somebody would do this during, um, I think it was Easter, one of the altar boys would always pass out because there was so much incense smoke. Uh, maybe it's because they were so relaxed they passed out. Who knows? Uh, there's also another form, just for those of you who are hikers. This is uh, when I attacked uh, Half Dome, 8,900 feet, I believe. And it's a cable that goes straight up to the top of the mountain. And only uh, one lane going up, one lane going down. Going up, it's nerve-wracking because it's so stressful. But as you get to the top and hang out there, nobody wants to go down, but you eventually have to go down. As you go down, it's like nobody holds on to the cables anymore because it's very calm. You're just in nirvana. And again, that's what I think the ancient countries practice is you have to practice that on a regular basis. You don't have to be in a sweat lodge. You don't have to smoke marijuana. Walk, but if you practice something, it'll offset the stress of everyday life. Now, in the United States, every day is a little bit more stressful than the other parts of the earth. So you might need more of that calming practice. The bottom line is, if you don't have a calming practice, meditation, mantra recitation, nature therapy, prayer, uh, at least three to five minutes in the morning, three to five minutes at night, then you're going to be mostly dominant stress response. We have two responses, stress response and love response. And it's supposed to go half and half. If you have all of this and it's a little bit of this, that's not going to be good. And you don't have to have eight hours a day of stress response and eight hours a day of calm response. The beauty of stress response is that if you need it in a hurry, you can run away and it turns off quick. So you can preserve energy. So running from a saber-toothed tiger, all of the ATP is is turned on immediately. The calm response, if you just have a little bit sprinkled in serotonin, I, I submit to you, it goes a long way. So I give my patients three to five minutes of calming practice in the morning, three to five minutes calming practice at night. Not to make this a parasympathetic thing, but that's the whole reason for medical cannabis is to calm. Now, if you have PTSD, I tried to get some of my PTSD patients to actually work with their therapist and do a little bit of cannabis before the therapy because it supposedly opens up to more acceptance of learning new coping skills. And that's the beauty. I have a couple patients who just use it just to experience a psychedelic response, uh, out-of-body experience, and, and that's okay, but you can't be doing that every day. That, that's too much. That's too much of this and not enough of a stress response. Maybe that's a teenager thing. But it has to be well-balanced. And if you have to use alcohol, I would submit to you that it might be better to consider this. You always have to worry. So Elaine, you always have to worry about munchies. And I think if you dial in and look at the menu in most of our dispensaries, we can help you figure out what product, what chemical in the medical marijuana plant will be best for calming without munchies because we're working on weight. Again, there is other ways uh, in addition to maybe using medical cannabis to calm have a great night's sleep, wake up totally refreshed, and take on the day, and then end up the next night with calm. So if you're going to have alcohol, I would at least keep it to once a, on a weekend, maybe, because that is a that is a fun form of socialized uh, relaxing and bonding with everybody. But if you're doing it every night by yourself, you might have other issues you got seen. My behavior therapists are really good. Uh, consider seeing a psychologist. I'll put a link on my psychologist, or at least my, uh, that I see. But it's always good to have other options. But if you have your own options that you use, or if you found side effects has really barred you from medical cannabis use, put them down below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe. Maybe share this with people who are worried about side effects. And I'll see you in the next video.